行ってみようよそうだなよくわからないものを見に行くか。I have a question for you. How often do you think about death? Once a year? A month? Or do you do everything you can to ignore it and pretend it doesn't exist? For me, it's an ever present thing in my mind. I can't seem to shake the thought of it. The idea that one day I'll be an old withered husk and die in a nursing home, or die due to someone else's actions. It's a constant, overbearing thought for me. Until I saw Girls Last Tour. As you can see, Girls Last Tour is a post apocalypse story, taking place far past the initial end of the world and into the last few specks of humanity and life on this earth. Girls Last Tour brings to us our protagonists, Chito and Yuri. Instead of what you would expect out of a story of the end of the world, with bombastic monsters and evil people permeating the landscape, Girls Last Tour takes a more somber approach. Melancholic is the word I would use to describe this story. We're brought along for the ride in Chido's Kettenkrad, given to her by her grandfather before another war incident took place, leaving virtually everyone left in the world dead. You would think the girls would spend their days moping about as they pick through the rubble that's left. They certainly pick through the rubble around them, but they don't seem to be sad about the state of the world. After all, When you have to spend every day worrying if you'll get enough food to survive, you don't think too much on the past sadness. The girls do find themselves in situations often enough they are brought face to face with what's left over. A fresh fish to catch, an apartment to live in, even other people. Though they only meet two others on their journey, the impact left from their visits is palpable. So, what keeps these girls going? Is it just the will to survive? Or a goal? Chito and Yuri both want to reach the highest point within the massive city they travel through. They focus on that singular goal, and though neither say it, they understand that it will most likely end in disappointment. But that's not the point. The point is that they go on regardless. The dynamic between Chito and Yuri is a sight to behold. Yuri's incessant need for food always becomes a talking point between them both. She's a carefree young girl who seems to only consider the moment she's currently living in. Chito, while being the more subdued of the two, keeps records of the past and values the leftover knowledge of the world. She'll take jabs at Yuri occasionally, but it clearly comes from a place of care. Yuri often worries Chito, and she's aware of her own faults. However, if she makes a mistake, She will try to rectify it. The relationship between the two girls is clearly one of a deep, familial bond. Sometimes they anger each other, but they still love each other at the end of the day. In the apocalypse, with that going on, what more could you want? The world of Girls Last Tour is vibrant with detail. While the city blocks all look uniform and horribly uncomfortable, they tell you everything you need to know about the world before the end. The apartments are all built to be as efficient as possible, along with nearly every structure or piece of equipment left to the world. From a watcher's perspective, we can figure out exactly what's happened to create this world. World leaders never finding common ground, and instead of thinking of the good of their people, they burn everything to ash instead. As we march on in our own world, watching as our own leaders make decisions for the worst time and time again, I can only wonder. How far off are we to the world of Girls Last Tour? The show does a fantastic job of always doing more show, don't tell. I can't stand it when a movie or a show has already given me the visual information I need, and then they have a character rattle it off right away after, like I'm some kind of limp brained idiot. The way the animators here have put together every shot and scene is near masterful work. The framing of each shot, along with the time it focuses on any important detail, is just enough. Just the opening of the anime is a testament to how powerful the visual medium can be when paired with music and scenery alone. The fantastic opening score playing over the dull sounds of the Kettenkrad as it makes its way through this massive complex with our girls front and center. The scene in episode 6 with Ishii 
As she finishes her playing with the help of the girls, as the main theme kicks in. It's an absolutely stunning sight. And as you're filled with hope, the music cuts suddenly, as it all crumbles away. My heart broke as this last chance for a person fell to pieces and began floating downwards to who knows where in the city. But Chito looks on through her scope to see that Ishii's smiling. She found herself at peace, finally, after finishing her plane. It was then I began to formulate my ideas of what the story was trying to help me understand. In the final scene of the anime adaptation, these alien mushroom creatures tell the girls they're the last humans alive known to them. This comes after a touching scene using Chopin's Nocturne Op 9, number 2. Here we get a montage from the camera given to the girls by Kanazawa. Videos showing life before total war broke out and what followed from that. You'd think they would break down after hearing this news, but instead, the girls move forward, glad that they at least have each other. The anime ends here, but the manga finishes the story, and what an ending too. If you've already grown accustomed to how the plot progresses in the show, then you'll most likely figure it out for yourself how it ends. If not, then I would highly recommend reading the manga to finish out the story. I did so while listening to the show's fantastic score composed by Kenichiro Suihiro. It brought the emotion to full boil as I read the ending to Chito and Yuri's story. The anime even shows us the final moments of the manga. You see it in every episode, you just don't realize it until you do. The snowball fight the girls have is their final moments together atop the city. They finish playing, and they eat something before going to sleep, left to rest forever now. I believe that this is a perfect ending for these characters. They'd achieved their goal, and when confronted with the true realization that they have nothing left, Yuri is still able to pull Chito away from those awful thoughts of their death, just for a final brief moment. They go quietly into the night as the last of humanity vanishes. Seeing these girls go through their daily struggles and adventures made me realize something about myself. That thinking about death every day and how it will always linger with you is fine. Of course, it's not a good thing to expect one's death, but to accept that it will come when it comes is another thing. It's brought me a modicum of peace in this already troubled world we live in. And I thank the author, Tsukumitsu. There's honestly so much more that could be talked about from this story with its subdued approach and clever twists in the slifes of life genre, but I've seen enough other videos discuss that and I wanted to bring my thoughts to the table and share them since I didn't see any discussion around this general acceptance of death the people in the story give. I think next time I'll talk about wolf children though. See you then.